Ladies and gentlemen, we have all of our panelists up here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and dive right in and get started. Um, so I decided uh, a couple of weeks ago, maybe a few weeks ago, to put this little panel together. Um, this actually, the idea of this panel started from a conversation. You know, I myself, I am a producer. I am an artist. Um, I just put out a single called Worth It. And the topic of the song is... Um, you know, some people sometimes ask questions like, man, you know, um, w would you rather be signed? You can you can make real money, you know, if you, if you were signed to a label, this and that, and et cetera. And I, I sit there and I think, like, there's so many stereotypes that kind of go behind this. I think there's a lot of money to be made. And, and not just money, but, like, you know, is it worth it, you, you know, for mental health and a lot of other reasons. So. I asked every single person on this panel to come up and kind of share their stories and experiences. Is it worth it? Yes or no. And in all honesty, like what could we do as artists to better position ourselves to be successful? So for the first person I have up, um, he is the editor in chief over at Rapzilla. He's an amazing person, amazing dude. I know he sees a lot of, um, Art and an artist come his way. So, Justin, welcome to the panel. How you doing, my friend? Thanks, Jimmy. Um, amazing person. Thank you for that. Um, good to good to be here. For everyone here, honored that you put me on a panel with uh, with some very talented and important people in music. Um, so, yeah, as as Jimmy said, I'm the editor of Rapzilla.com. I've spent a little over a decade. Um, in journalism, majority of that time focused on music and and entertainment spaces. So the, the whole idea of being an indie artist, is it worth it, risk-reward, there's, there's a lot of things that, that people can do to set themselves up for success. And my main preaching point when I'm always talking to artists and, and they ask me, um, you know, what, what can we do to, to get noticed? What can we do to get on a platform? And one of my keys really is handling your business professionally and just being professional and knowing how to communicate effectively, whether that be through email, um, you know, in person, making those connections. So I'd like to first focus on, you know, press releases and just introducing yourself as an artist or creator whenever whenever you are trying to get on this platform or make your introduction to everybody. So like it really doesn't even matter what style of music you make, whether you're heavy metal, country, whether you do K-pop, uh, being an indie artist is super difficult when you're starting out. Um, I was in a band for a long time, and if I knew some of the things that I know now, I probably would not be on this panel, and I'd be out making music. So <laughs> there's just lots of things that I've, I've learned and I've figured out over the years. Um, and reading thousands of press releases over the, over the course of 10 years, you know, I've seen really bad ones, really good ones, people just misguided. Um, so... The, the key is always to stand out, even if the music isn't very good. Like I could see in a, in a very good press release that there's an effort there and that the person actually cares how they represent themselves. Because we all know talent can only take you so far. Sometimes that talent is never realized because of the complete failure of simple communication. So I feel like you know, the number one way, obviously, to get your music heard is through the internet. Sometimes you blow up organically on SoundCloud or YouTube, but for those that don't receive, you know, that blessing, that lightning in a bottle, you really have to hustle. And now it's easier to hustle more than ever before. You don't have to write letters to newspapers. You don't have to put up flyers all over your town, even though you can. But uh, a simple press release or an email to a blog, a website, uh, a magazine, or anything could really be the big difference. So you gotta you gotta think of your press release as your entire brand, your identity, your career. It's your handshake when you meet somebody. It's like the resume when you go for a job interview. That first impression, sometimes that first impression, that handshake is the only thing you got. So that's what I consider, you know, that that first pitch to somebody. Uh, that's what I'm looking for, too, when, when you're sending and pitching your music to me. Um, 
oftentimes those pitches are going to a submission box or a super busy editor uh, where you know hundreds of emails can be coming in. It takes a ton of time to do that. Most of the time, you won't even hear a reply because your email gets lost or you know they don't recognize the name. So you just have to figure out how to do that. So that's standing out. And one of those things you can do, and it's, it's very time consuming, but when you do it, um, you know, we, the people on the other side, we can tell is that you do your research. You look at this blog, the website, the magazine, you look for the keys on how to submit. If they list one to eight steps to follow, nail one to eight steps of everything that they say. If they sing, do this and we'll notice, then do that and they will notice most likely. Um, if you're trying to get in touch with a certain section, editor, writer, Search the site for contact information or an email to send to. Please do not stalk us on social media uh, and message us. I've gotten the the uh, the triple the triple message of Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and it's super annoying. Um, Twitter for me, at least, is the least invasive. I feel like when you're speaking to people you don't know, but if you can get an email, that is the best way. Um, what kind of articles do these websites post? Um, do they post people that are similar to what you're doing? And then, you know, you can figure out, will they even cover the type of thing that I'm creating? And then something else that happens all the time is, you know, you're, you're not necessarily pitching the correct thing. Like for instance, Rabzilla covers Christian hip hop. So if you're pitching to a Christian website, maybe don't submit music that's littered with profanity or like graphic, graphic sexuality, because, we're not going to post that. But in the same vein, if your music is explicitly hardcore Christian, then you probably wouldn't want to submit it to Worldstar uh, unless you pay for it. So learn how to gauge and read what a website will publish and figure out whether to invest your time in doing so. Um, get the genre right. You know, Don't send your hip-hop mixtape to a website that covers alternative rock. Like make sure it makes sense. Uh, also, when you're when you're addressing people, one of one of the things that always makes me laugh is like when someone puts that first line, like "so and so publication is my favorite. I read it all the time. I've been following them for years." And then you read the next sentence, and you realize that statement is not true at all because they didn't follow any of the guidelines. It's clear that they have no idea what your website's about because of the music they just submitted. And what that shows me is that you know they have a template and they're just switching out you know, the name and the email every single time. And that's good, but, you know, scenarios dictate, you know, little changes and tweaks that you can make to make everybody, you know, feel personable that you're, that you're, you know, sending an email to. You have to, f you have to feed the person's ego to, to make them care. I don't want to feel like I'm just another publication that you could check off your list. Um, so here are some um, do's and do nots. I'll start with the do nots. Um, and these, these are obviously different for most people um, or for all people. Uh, these are my preferences. So do not just drop a link or a video on a song and nothing else. It says nothing who you are and most people will ignore it. Do not say, yo, what's up guys, peep my mixtape. Uh, because you wouldn't do that when you're introducing yourself. Uh, do not make your whole introduction, but not supply that needed information. You know that those first emails need to include everything about you. You know your picture, your your social links, your bio. Just we shouldn't have to ask you for stuff. Don't and at the same time, don't email an entire novel. Like we don't need to. Like Justin was born in New York City in 1988, and and blah blah blah. Like we don't we don't need your birth story. Just just the important stuff about your artist. Um, check for typos. I've seen people get their own name wrong. Uh, the dates of their releases, their own tracks. I see it all the time. Um, also, don't send an email covered in you know CCs or forwarded from other places because. You know, that's just a mass pitch. It's kind of spammy. And, you know, it's also missing that one-to-one -one feel. Um, here are some of the do's, things that you should always have. Do provide a summary of who you are with the most important details or accomplishments you have. Provide those links. Like I said, provide a high-res photo of yourself and your artwork. Provide your relevant social media links so that if we do write about you, we know how to tag you. We know how to send people toward you. 
oftentimes people will send in a single and they'll send no social media links. So we have to try to find them. Um, be clear and concise in that heading. Uh, and here's an example. Uh, attention, young clueless drops debut single. What am I doing? Music video debuts for eight twenty one. Um, you know, let us know exactly what it is. Uh, and you know, with all that info, it, it's less work that the writer has to do. And if I have to spend twenty minutes looking up something about you and I've never heard of you, that's that's going to be a pass. Um, don't make the publication put more effort in writing about you than you writing to them. Uh, we have a limited amount of time and deadlines to hit, and we could just move on to the next person who's doing everything according to what we're looking for. Um, one of the tough things is sometimes, you know, you do everything right and a publication still won't answer. Um, you know, that could be varying reasons, like everything be perfect, perfect, but maybe it doesn't fit the direction of the website. Maybe there's too much going on that day and they just have to skip you. And sometimes the tough part is maybe your music just isn't up to snuff. Maybe the quality wasn't good. Maybe the talent was lacking, but also remember that the people who are receiving the music is subjective. Um, so that doesn't mean that you should give up. That means maybe you could send it to another place. Maybe someone else will like your music. Uh, but with that being said, you could still send, I'd say, one to two follow-ups over, you know, a week or two period. Don't do it the same day. Don't do it the next day. Also, don't just copy and paste the same exact email every single time. Um, change up your approach. Because if it didn't work the first time, what makes you, you know, think that it's going to work the same exact email the second and third time? Like, change it up a bit. Um, sometimes the emails get lost. Maybe that second email is a good reminder of, oh, I did want to post this person, but, you know, 100 emails came in and I lost it. Um, also, don't expect to get a reply because there's so many emails coming in and, and don't reply back like demanding that you get a reply because if we didn't have the time to post to you or we didn't even see to post to you, we're not going to have the time to give you a list of reasons that you're not going to be happy about about why we didn't post to you. Um, so it's, it's definitely a lot of work. If you find that doing this stuff is challenging on your own, then find somebody who can do that for you. You know, you can pay people. I'm sure there are plenty of people in this clubhouse chat right now that could help you. I could help you. I'm very busy, but I could help you. Um, so you can always find somebody and a few quick other notes real quick. Um, if you're not paying a website or an ad, you know, a publication generally does not work for you. They're not responsible for marketing or promoting your product. You are. You have to invest in your craft. Don't make others do that for you. Um, don't take shots at a publication that doesn't post to you because one day they might want to post to you. And they'll remember what you said on your pages, just like when people get fired from their jobs for old social media posts. It's the same thing. Um, don't burn bridges. Um, don't submit old songs or news. If your music moves so quick, especially with streaming, if your album came out two months ago, I shouldn't receive a press release about it today. Like you missed window, I feel like. Uh, singles have more leeway, um, but the only exception to this would be if, if a music video or song suddenly went viral and now it's picking up the steam that it didn't the first time, then yes, by all means, you know, send it out again. Um, also send music that's the best representation of who you are at the time that you're sending it. Um, because maybe your best song is from five years ago, but if you don't sound like that now, then there's, you know, there's a disconnect because when you send in that next song, that's your new song. They're going to be like, Hey, this isn't the same artist that, that we, you know, we heard the first time. Um, and also it's always important to remember, you can't make someone like something they don't like. So you may have this this bias or this person that you always pitch to, and maybe they just don't like your your sound. So you kind of just have to have tough skin and move on and, and not take it personal. You know, writers are thinking of what's best for their audience. You know, you agree to disagree. You keep moving. You could use it as fuel to prove why they maybe missed out on posting you or you just get posted somewhere else. Um other than that, like th those are those are kind of my golden keys as somebody who has sorted through submissions for ten years about and and just working with artists and seeing artists and consulting with people and and just trying. Basically, my goal, especially for indie artists, is I just want everyone to give their best and look their best as they're doing it. Um, 
not really as much as a music or talent, a talent evaluator, but I can help you get to where you need to be by just helping you set up professionally. Um, and that's it, man. Thanks, Jimmy. Dude, that, that was awesome, bro. So much information just packed in that little, little bit of time. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, thank you so much, Justin, for hopping on here.